What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. So from the last video, we actually saw how to find out the antiderivative of the flow function uh, y equals uh, flow of x uh, with respect to x, or in other words, the integral of flow of x dx. Um, so this time, we're going to do something similar. Instead of taking the flow function, we're going to actually try to see what happens if we try to, uh, if we're going to have the ceiling function. In other words, what's the ceiling function? Well, it just really means that we're going to round up the, um, the um, numerical results of whatever we have, and then we will actually take the integer part, such as if we have uh, 2.5, then we're going to round up to the next, um, yeah, the next integer that's closest to 2.5. In this case, it will be just three. And let's say if we have pi, which is numerically roughly 3.14, then we're going to round up into four because that's the next integer that is uh, not smaller than it. Now, what if we already have an integer such as if we have 10, then unfortunately we have to accept 10 itself because the, flow, uh, the ceiling function is similar to a flow function that actually has to include the integer itself if we already start with it. In other words, instead of saying that we will take the uh, next biggest or, or the next, excuse me, next uh, smallest integer, it is more likely to say that we will take the smallest integer uh, such that the integer is not smaller than the number that we start off with. Okay, it doesn't have to be strictly bigger than uh, it could be bigger than or equal to, meaning if we already start with an integer, that integer will just be the value uh, after we take the, uh, the ceiling function. Good, so how are we supposed to find the antiderivative of the ceiling function? We're actually going to use the same method, but um, in fact, we actually can use two different methods. Method one, we're going to do the same thing as what we did in the previous video for this uh, for, uh, the flow function by uh, first, uh, let's re uh, rewriting this uh, antiderivative into um, the antiderivative of um, some indefinite, uh, indefinite integrals. Let's call it i, which is actually starting from zero to x. And this time we are going to take the uh, ceiling function and dx, and again, we'll just call this capital F of x, which is what we're going to find. And then later on, uh, once we find the results, we'll just add the, the constant term plus c to uh, complete our expression. So if we're going to take this, then such an integral, again, can be rewritten as from zero to, in this case, um, since we have the c, uh, we have the ceiling function here, um, we will still actually take the flow function first, uh, here to uh, from zero to the flow of x, then we're going to take, uh, excuse me, not dx here, we cannot use the same variable, it will be too, uh, un uh, too confusing. So let's stick with u. So we will have um, the ceiling of u du plus uh, starting from the floor of x to x itself of ceiling of u du. Okay, now why do we want to take the, the, um, the integral? I mean, not the integral, um, yeah, um, the integral from zero to the flow of x instead of this, um, from zero to the ceiling of x? Well, we can actually do that, but then there will be a problem that ceiling of x is, uh, has to be uh, greater than or equal to x, meaning that we'll actually cover more than what we want. And in that case, of course, by the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, we can install um, breaking into two parts and have the addition there. We actually will uh, subtract from the uh, from the extra part that we actually add on. But again, um, in that case, it will be a little bit annoying. So let's stick with here what we have. Then we are going to figure out. Now think of it graphically, uh, or even by definition. Since we are having a ceiling function, it means that if we are assigned from zero to one that part is going to end up with the value of one instead of zero for the y value. So from one to two, it will be end up with two, two to three, it will be end up with three. 
and so on and so forth. And since this is the, actually the ceiling, of, uh, this um, well, not the ceiling, this is actually the floor of X, which is an integer, but this is at the same time um, the upper bound of the whole integral. We actually will ha have the sum from one, which is actually from zero to one, plus two, one to two, so on and so forth, until the last part, which is uh, the flow of x minus one to flow of x. But for that part, again, we are actually taking the ceiling, so we have to shift up and then hit the right endpoint, which is actually the ceiling of, well, actually the flow of x in this case, for the first part. Now, for the second part, we're going to use the same idea. Starting from the ceiling of, uh, no, starting from the flow of x to x, well, um, Flow of x is an integer, but the, uh, and then to x here, uh, everything is uh, well. If we ignore the uh, left, uh, the lower, uh, the lower bound here, everything else is actually greater. Uh, is actually strictly greater than this integer here. So if we take the ceiling of it, we need to move on to the next value. In other words, we actually have the flow of x plus one or um. To be more precise, it will, uh, it will actually be um, the ceiling of x because that will actually give us the upper bound here, ceiling of x. Then, of course, we need to multiply by uh, the width of this rectangle here, which is from x, uh, well, actually from uh, flow of x to x. So it will be x minus flow of x. Good. Then what are we supposed to do? Well, don't forget we actually need to think of what uh, the flow of, uh, what is the relationship between flow of x and the ceiling of x. But anyway, let's try to uh, uh, combine them together first, and then we'll actually see what we'll get. Now, using the um, uh, we're going uh, as we're trying to uh, use the Gauss uh, Gauss method of adding the linear terms together. We will take uh, the number of terms, which is actually the flow of x, multiply with the um, the first term plus the last term, so it will be uh, flow of x plus one, all divided by two. Now we will actually have plus uh, here we have the flow uh, ceiling of x over x minus uh, flow of x. Now, if we try to think of it. Suppose that x is not an integer in, well, because um, generally speaking, uh, the chance of um, x being an integer is actually approached to zero, as uh, if we think it um, yeah, um, statistically, or if we try to think of uh, yeah, the probability of choosing any random numbers uh, such that it's an integer, uh, the chance is actually almost close to zero. And in fact, it's actually close to zero if we no. Uh, Take it in higher level, uh, higher uh, course, uh, higher math co uh, courses. Uh, anyway, in that case, we would just um, might as well assume that uh, x is not an integer. Then, between the flow, uh, between the flow of x and the ceiling of x, we would just say that the ceiling of x is just uh, one higher than the flow of x because if x is not an integer, it's lying between two integers. Then we will say that the flow of x will be n, and the ceiling of x will just be n plus one. So that now, if we try to compare between these two, these two has a width of one, and in other words, the ceiling of x is just equal to flow of x plus one. Then, if we try to rewrite it, we will actually get the following. Let's see. Um, so. We actually will get um, the ceiling, uh, the flow of x is equal to the ceiling of x minus one times here is just a ceiling, uh, ceiling of x all over two plus we still have the ceiling here times x minus flow of x, which is actually a ceiling of x minus one, but then we have double negative to turn it into a positive one. Then after that, we'll just try to factor out again we have a one half in the denominator here, or, or two in the denominator, so we factor it out. We have um, ceiling of x on both terms, factor that out, such that the first 
part will just end up with ceiling of x minus 1 plus the second part which is um, 2 times x or 2x minus 2 ceiling of x plus 2 times 1 which is 2 then we actually uh, close the parentheses and we now just need to uh, combine all the like terms together and simplify the expression to get uh, 2x minus well we have one copy minus two copies so we still have negative one copy of ceiling of x and then we have negative one plus two which ends up with plus one so that will be the expression uh, of the uh, integral of um, the linear uh, well the ceiling function uh, the ceiling linear function from zero to x so if we try to generalize it we will actually get uh, this expression plus c and this will be the expression uh, in general as we try to find the antiderivative of the ceiling function of uh, ceiling of x uh, with respect to x itself good so this is the first method now uh, again how can we actually check whether it's true or not we are we can actually substitute with um, a few different values again it's just similar to uh, checking the uh, the antiderivative of the flow function but instead of choosing from 0 to 1 we're going to choose from 1 to 2 here because uh, no we actually choose from negative 1 to 0 because as we know that for any x values between negative 1 to 0 here um, other than uh, other than negative 1 itself uh, the um, the uh, from the graph from the uh, area of such um, what's so called rectangle is just a straight line on the on the x-axis which actually will end up with 0 meaning that we should actually get the integral without the c part is actually equal to 0 if we try to simplify the expression uh, without the c part then and again, why do we need to? Uh, we, why can we include negative one? Because even if we include negative one, it's not going to change the uh, the total value as negative one uh, that uh, is uh, is actually discontinued from uh, uh, everything else in the interval, and that negative one is just what we call singleton or just a single value uh, in the integral that would not change the total area or the total measure of it then we can of course try to take from 0 to 1 and that should actually uh, give us um, the integral is actually going to be simplified into just the x value uh, and again just ignore the c part and then try to substitute it and see if you will be able to get this result then last but not least you can check when uh, what happened when x is any integer and in this case, you can just set x equals to some integer n and set x into uh, n plus 1 respectively to the expression on the right. And of course, again, you can ignore the c um, um, because you're, oh, we are just thinking uh, the integral i, well, the integral i uh, um, by, uh, by two of uh, fundamental, cal uh, fundamental theorem of calculus there. Um, such that um, you uh, and uh, such that we'll be able to check whether or not uh, substituting uh, x by n and x by n plus one were giving us the same result on the right hand side. Second method, we actually need to use the results of our uh, interderivative. Of the ceiling uh, of the flow function to help us find out the ceiling function. And again, you can actually do it the other way around. As long as you find out one function, you should be able to use it to find the other. So here is what the second method is trying to show. So uh, based on this previous video, the uh, the antiderivative of the flow function will be one half times the flow of x times the quantity 2x minus the flow of x minus 1 and then we have plus c so now we're going to do a substitution so first since x could be a dummy variable let's replace it 
uh, into some other va uh, some other variables. Again, let's use our most favorite um, variable, u. Right? Everyone loves to use up uh, in calculus. So we can just replace it by u uh, as a dummy variable. You can just use a happy face if you want. Then what we're going to do is we need to think it into two parts. So first, what if u is uh, an integer? If u is an integer, then clearly uh, the floor and the ceiling should end up being the same. But uh, we are going to, you know, we actually need to change something a little bit. What are we supposed to change? Well, we actually have this integral. Let's call it again, uh, let's call it j here. Then j here is going to be replaced by uh, u because again, the uh, Yeah, um, it will be, uh, yeah, so J is going to be uh, equal to one half times U. And again, because U is already an integer, the flow of the integer is just the integer itself. Then we will have one half times U times two U minus again, flow of U is just U itself and then minus one. And then we have a plus C here. And as we try to simplify everything inside of the parentheses, we we'll actually get uh, one half times u times the quantity u minus one plus c. Now let's think of uh, the integral that we want to find, which is, um, we'll say that then the integral of the ceiling function of u uh, uh, in terms of the, well, with respect to x or dx is just going to be, uh, what we're going to get is we're going to get uh, the next term of u here uh, plus one half uh, plus the integral down here j. And again, why? Because if we think of it graphically, it's just a uh, it's just a basic shift between the ceiling function and the floor function. The floor function which is actually in purple, will look like this. Where the ceiling function in red is just a shift. Uh, you can think of it shifting upward or shifting to, the, uh, shifting to the left. But either way, it means that when we try to take the integral, we just actually need to add the last term, which is actually um, x units more. Because as we think it uh, is a shift uh, to the left, everything is going to match and then there is an extra part of uh, the, um, the highest red rectangle that we're missing. And that's how we actually get X or U. Okay, let me reuse the U here. Good, then we have the extra part U plus just the integral of the ceiling, uh, the floor function. In this case, it will just be U plus one half of U times U minus one plus C. Here, then we factor out the u and one half. The first term will turn into two plus the uh, u minus one to end up with u plus one plus c. Good. So again, what is that? It is just giving us um the um the ceiling of u. Okay. Uh, actually, um, uh, right. How do we actually get that? Because the ceiling of u, which is an, uh, which is just u itself as an integer, here, but u can be rewritten as uh, two u minus u, so that we have two u minus u, which is the same as the floor of u itself, and then plus one, and then finally we have plus c. So we actually check that. Uh, oh, we actually make the same expression uh, when u is an integer. So let's jump to the next board and uh, check the result of uh, u is not an integer. So now we're actually at the second case when u is not an integer. Then if u is not an integer, we actually know that um, the ceiling of u 
uh, and the flow of U has a difference of one. Again, because U is actually lying between two integers and if we try to round up and if we try to round down, the, no, 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 we actually have one unit off. So in this case, what we are going to do is we can actually try to uh, claim that um, the ceiling of U is equal to the floor of U plus one. And then we're going to, let's throw it back in and replace it with X, okay? And either way, these two will be constants. And uh, um, it's always a constant and also they're, in, uh, they're integers. Then we can actually try to replace the U by, or we start with X, same thing. Uh, we're going to let um, uh, U be X plus one, okay? Then from the, Integral that we already know of, or the antiderivative j, which is the, um, let's see, the flaw of u, du, and of course so we actually need to do a sub, uh, uh, u sub, uh, well clearly as a u sub, or we make it as an x sub here. So we actually have du is equal to dx. Then we actually get that on the left hand side. Um, let me put it in red and down here. It's just equal to uh, the floor of replace u by x plus one, and then du by dx. Then we actually get on the right hand side of the expression, we have one half times the floor of x plus one times two times u, uh, which is x plus one, so we get two x plus two, minus the floor of u, which is again x plus one here, and then minus one plus c, such that uh, on the right hand side, we will stick it uh, in purple uh, to get that one half. Now, as we claim that, uh, since uh, u is not an integer, we also should uh, notice that x plus one is not an integer either. So in other words, uh, if x plus one is not an integer, the floor of x plus one here will actually be the same as the, um, the ceiling of x, because as we try to think of any numerical uh, value, which is such as like 10.35 here, then if we try to replace it by, uh, uh, if we take the floor of it, it will just be 10 where if we subtract the one away, it will just end up be nine point something. But then as we take the floor, I mean, take the ceiling, we will actually get the same results. So this is in fact equal to the ceiling of X. Um, then times, we still have the two X here. And then we have the, uh, let's put the plus two and minus one together at the end to, get, uh, uh, to give us plus one. And then we still have the minus the flow of x plus one and again that's just be the same as ceiling of x and then don't forget we have at the end plus c where on the left hand side we can also simplify that into again since we claim uh we just uh observe that the ceiling uh of x is just equal to the flow of x plus one where x is not equal to an integer we can just replace that by ceiling of X like this, which again will match the results that we actually found in method one. And therefore now as we cover both uh, cases, and in fact, we actually cover all possible cases for U or X here, we actually get the same results as we found in method one. And that is how we can actually uh, try to find out the, um, find out the antiderivative of the ceiling function uh, of x with respect to x itself um, without trying to uh, chopping up the interval into several pieces and then add them back together. But instead, we actually need to know what the antiderivative of the other kind of function we have and play around with the algebra to get the same result. All right. That is it.
I know this video is kind of long, but I hope you all will enjoy it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Also turn on the notification so that you won't miss any of my new videos when they come out. Also, if you have any thoughts, you can leave your comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video.